grace and peace to you from the one who takes care of all of our needs. Amen. Dear friends in Jesus, anybody hungry? Maybe you slept a little late this morning and you didn't get breakfast and now your stomach is starting to talk to you and the person next to you is, is hearing that. If you're not hungry yet, maybe by the time worship is over today, chances are you, you're going to be. Uh, hunger is, is our, I think, our, our most pressing physical need, right? If we don't meet that need, we don't function well. That nothing else in our life really goes well until we take care of that need to, to be fed. Well, the good news for you is if you are going to be hungry by the time you leave here today, there are all kinds of ways to meet that need. You can go right over there to Carl's, grab something to to put on the grill when you get home. You could go down the street to Quick Trip, grab some milk and a donut. I I recommend the cream-filled Long John's. You you could also go to places like Maxim or other, other restaurants around here that will give you a nice brunch today. You could go drive through it. Big Deal Burger, McDonald's. Culver's, Chick-fil-A. You could make a phone call when you leave the building, have toppers deliver a pizza, and the pizza might even beat you home. You you could pick up a pizza from Papa Murphy's on your way home. So many options. Or you could just go home and save some money and cook whatever you have in, in your pantry. So many ways for us to make sure that we have the food that we need. But there's a problem with that. Isn't there? With so many ways to be taken care of, with so many ways to to provide that that basic need that we have, isn't it easy to forget who does the providing? How many of us honestly believe and remember that that quarter pounder with cheese is from God and not from the lady at the window? In all of our lessons today, we're reminded that God takes care of all of our needs, and in our gospel lesson especially, we get a powerful reminder of who our provider is, and he encourages us to trust that provider. The lesson begins this way. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now imagine you're one of the disciples. You have been running a hectic schedule. Jesus doesn't stop. It has been just been a long couple of days of teaching and healing and sharing the gospel with whoever he comes into contact with. And you yourselves have been busy. You just got back from your first mission trip and you're so fired up and excited and you want to tell Jesus all about it. You just haven't had a chance to yet because he doesn't stop. Finally, finally you think you're going to get some peace and quiet, some downtime And then sure enough, another crowd shows up. This happens all the time, and it tells us here another crowd comes out, that they're chasing Jesus, and you know exactly what he's going to do because he's done it before. As soon as that crowd shows up, you know he's going to go out to them and you're not going to have the time that you desperately need. But there's a difference this time. This time, this crowd, it says they they gathered in a solitary place place. So as you stand there, a little tired, a little frustrated, you see that the numbers rolling in and you start to figure that 10, maybe 15,000 people out here and we're out in the boonies, there's nothing to eat. These people are going to be hungry. And picking up on your thoughts, Jesus asks you the question, this is recorded in John, he says, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He drops that question and then he goes off to do what Jesus does. It says he sees the crowd, he has compassion on them and he heals their sick. Jesus heads off to tend to the physical and spiritual needs of the crowd and he leaves you to ponder that question, how are we going to feed these people? And what should have been a, a pretty easy problem was made extremely difficult by limited sinful minds. How would you have answered the question. How would you have solved the problem? Jesus says, how are we going to feed these people? What would you have come up with? There wasn't a McDonald's around the block. I don't think Capernaum had a Piggly Wiggly, and even if it did, it was too far to get there and back, and you don't have enough money to cover that many people anyway. 
Nobody brought their coolers. Nobody packed their sandwiches. How are you going to solve the problem? Unsurprisingly, human wisdom had no solution, nothing to offer. And in fact, after maybe a couple of hours of pondering this, the disciples, they're ready to be rid of the problem. It says, as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, it's getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Can you put that into your own words? Lord, this really isn't our problem. Get rid of these people so they can go and fend for themselves. They can go buy their own food. Lord, it's not really our deal to worry about. Disciples didn't want to have to bother with meeting the needs of somebody else, somebody they thought could maybe take care of themselves. And so they asked Jesus to send the crowd away. But did you notice how Jesus makes it their problem? Jesus replied, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. Like Jesus so often does with us, he, he forces them to wrestle with the problem. He forces them to face the problem head on and hopefully come to the conclusion that in and of themselves, they can't fix it. That they need help. They need to look to somebody else. Hopefully, look to him. Well, it was at least partially successful. They say, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Can you hear the helplessness in their voices? If you're going to translate that, Lord, we can't do this. There's no possible way we can feed these people. We have no money. We have no food. Look how many of them there are. How in the world are we going to do this? Lord, it's not happening. Can, can you hear their stress level rising? Can you hear the fret? Can you imagine the panic, the doubt, the worry, the anxiousness? You know how they're feeling because we've been there. We've been there when the bills are piling up and the paycheck can't cover them. We've been there when dad is laid off or when mom loses her benefits at work. We've been there when we're trying to pay this debt by holding off the check on this other debt and hoping we don't get caught in the, the juggling act. We've been there as our, our retirement account takes the hit when the market goes down and we're not sure what retirement is going to look like. We've been there when, when we got uh, maybe a little too crazy on the spending and the bills are coming due and, and we don't have enough savings to cover it. We've been there when our stress level rises and we get anxious and we worry we know how that feels. Can you imagine how frustrated Jesus was? Can you imagine? He's standing there, right there. The disciples are at their wit's end with how they're going to solve this problem, and he's right here. How frustrated do you think Jesus can be with us? We have our fears and our worries and our anxieties. And then the temptations come in, right? And we, we're tempted then to, to give less to God and we're tempted to work more and to worship less and we're tempted to pace back and forth rather than to hit our knees in prayer at the foot of our beds. We're tempted to do everything but look to Jesus. And he's right here. Our Savior invites us, no, pleads with us in those moments to, to take a breath and to read or to recall the words that he gives to us. Words like, be still and know that I am God. Words like, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Words like, seek first his kingdom and righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. But so often, rather than turn to those awesome, reassuring words, we're, we're like the disciples, we forget who our provider is. And every time we forget that, every time we panic, every time we stress, that's one more sin on the pile, right? One more reason why we're deserving of nothing but eternal punishment from him. 
Dear brothers and sisters, that's when we need to remember who our provider is. Look at him. Look at who he is. In this lesson, look. He's calm. He's cool. He's collected, and especially, he's in control. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. Just like that, the problem is solved. Jesus provides, the people were fed and the disciples were left with a powerful Reminder, it's not a coincidence that each disciple got to pick up a basket full of leftovers. That was Jesus' clear message to every one of them. Guys, I'm right here. I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna provide for you. Just trust me. Look to me. Now, we don't have a basket full of fish and bread this morning but what we have is far greater than that. And what we have isn't really carried in a basket. We have a baptism font, which reminds us that in Christ, we have faith, forgiveness, and salvation. God's name was placed on us. We belong to him. We are his children. We have the body and blood of Jesus, which reassures us that in that blood, we're forgiven of all of our sins. Our standing with God is right and true. And we have an empty cross, which proves that our sins were paid for. Christ isn't there anymore. It is finished. We are saved. Heaven is our home. We have a Savior who has done everything to make sure that we could have our eternal needs met so that we could be with Jesus forever. So brothers and sisters, remember your provider. Trust him. He could feed thousands of people with some fish and some bread. He could save billions and billions by shedding his blood on the cross. He can provide for you and me each and every day. Your Savior says to you today, I'm right here. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to provide for you. Trust me. Amen.